Hello beautiful people, we are Max and Jacqueline. And if you're new around here, we have been traveling full time for the last 12 months and documenting all of our travels here on YouTube. We visited four continents, 19 countries, we've taken over 40 flights and countless buses and trains. So we often get asked, how do we afford this lifestyle? Does YouTube pay for it? How did you get the money to be able to do what we do? So we've decided to put this video together to give you a full breakdown on what it costed us to travel for this 12 months. Luckily, we have been tracking everything that we've been spending since we first started traveling. At the beginning, it was pretty basic and general, but as time went on, we have been able to track our spending really accurately. So we thought we would just start by sharing the total amount that we spent in 12 months, which was... 67,121 Australian dollars, which sounds like a lot, but I mean, it's 12 months of travel for two people, so. So in terms of where we went, we started from Sri Lanka. We actually had a layover in Singapore on the way there. We then from then went to Italy. Then we went to visit my family and friends. We spent about a month there. And from there, we actually went to my friend's wedding in Bulgaria. Now, Bulgaria was absolutely beautiful. It's really something we didn't think we would go. It was an amazing time. And then we actually went to Turkey where Jacqueline's mom joined us. We went to Cappadocia, we did the Heart of Balloon Rhine. Uh, we then went to Albania. We rented a car for a whole week. And out of those last three countries I mentioned, it is Europe, but it's definitely much more affordable than the Western part of Europe. And we went to Venice. We then went to Morocco. And then we went to visit my mom in South Africa. We popped by Mozambique. And then we went skiing in France, this is where we had a very expensive month. Obviously skiing is not the cheapest. In Southeast Asia, we went to the Philippines, amazing place. And Philippines turned out to be our cheapest month so far. Uh, we average 128 Australian dollars per week, so very affordable for two people. We then went to Thailand, Malaysia, we were supposed to go to Vietnam, we went to Cambodia and then to Vietnam and after that we popped by again by France and now we are our 13th month starting in So that sounds like a really large amount of money to spend and yes we absolutely could have spent less by being doing more research and searching like cheaper countries to visit that would have made our spending way cheaper. At the beginning of our travels our budget was a lot higher so when we first started traveling for six months we still had our online jobs we were working full time we were traveling and on top of that we were trying to film YouTube videos. So the first six months we weren't really budgeting, even though we were tracking our spending, we, our budget was quite a bit higher. But that only lasted six months because we honestly burnt out pretty quickly by trying to do so much stuff. So in January, we made the decision to go to Southeast Asia because we knew it would be much more affordable. And by doing that, we could actually work less because we didn't need to earn as much to cover our expenses. So since being in Southeast Asia, yes, our budget was way less, but we've also been earning way less money as well. But that was a strategic decision because we just wanted to enjoy our travels a bit more and put more effort into the YouTube videos that we've been creating. Which I hope thing that you've enjoyed because we put a lot of effort but anyway okay carry on okay so our total daily average came to $183 a day our biggest expense by far was accommodation which came to a total of $18,444 so how do we find accommodation, try to find the cheapest options, always we are trying to find the cheapest options for accommodation, <laughs> but with a balance of like niceness. So the best cheapest option is what Good. we're really looking for. So usually we use booking.com, we usually filter by the location that we want to be in and we will add in things like it has to have a private bathroom, it has to have Wi-Fi, and it has to have a rating of at least 7 stars. And then we sort from price lowest to highest and we just try to find the best value for money. We also use Airbnb, although we've had a number of bad experiences with Airbnb, you just have to be really thorough with reading the reviews on Airbnb. So our next biggest expense was food. <laughs> <laughs> Our total amount spent on food was $18,015.
but we like food. We like good, healthy, good quality food, so we're willing to spend a little bit extra to make sure that we're still eating healthy, good quality food. You know, food is fuel, so you need it to travel. Yeah, so one thing to note about food is that I'd like to say that we're vegetarian uh, as much as we possibly can, so that you would think that that would save a lot of cost. But actually vegetarian food tends to be more expensive in most countries. A very good thing actually about doing or well, not eating meat is that it saves you on food poisoning or having bad food. Okay. Moving on. Third most expensive expense uh, comes transportation. We spend a total of $16,943 on plane transportation such as bus, uh, boat, ferries, train, buses. We took everything. 66% um, of that was from the plane. We do save a little bit by having signed up to credit cards. We'll tell you a little bit more about it in the next one. We did take a bit of buses in Vietnam which were overnight, so that sort of saved a little bit on accommodation. Not that we're gonna go and recommend as much as we <laughs> wish we could have. So then I asked again if we're going to like stop somewhere, anywhere, at an actual bathroom at any point, and he just flicks, waves me off, shook his head, smoked a cigarette, just wouldn't have anything to do with me. So I had to go in the darkness and pee in a field. <laughs> Don't well, laugh at me. Whilst I was asleep. We recommend trying it once. Just so you can have the experience for yourself. Yeah. Our next biggest expense was of course activities where we spent $7,466. So activities for us pretty much includes everything that we're doing for like entertainment value. So if we're doing a tour or an experience like the Cappadocia hot air balloon, we also include portions of um, different things inside our activities. So for example, when we went to South Africa, we stayed at a safari lodge and it was pretty expensive, but we kind of divided it up because it was all inclusive. It included all of our meals, it included all of our safari drives and our accommodation. So what we did is we divided the total price by three. We put a third of it into food, a third of it into accommodation and a third of it into activities. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, $7,466, considering the amazing experience we've had, I think that that's a really low price. We also don't do a lot of tours. So we do do tours sometimes when we really think we're going to get value out of them. But most of the time, we kind of like to figure it out on our own and do things on our own as much as possible because it does save us a lot of money. And one thing that we sort of caught on that is something you can do to save money is there's a lot of free guides or audio guides online. So have a quick browse before you go to a museum or a monument and you'll actually be surprised. And we also find some really good tours on Airbnb experience as well. Mm. All right, and in the next and last category we have tracked is basically the things that you don't know you have to spend until you start traveling. For us, that comes down to the travel insurance. Uh, we went with Safety Wing, touch wood we haven't had the need for. But it's always a reassuring thing considering we do some pretty cool activities to be honest. So the cool thing about Safety Wing is they're actually set up specifically for like digital nomads or long-term travelers. We found a lot of the other travel insurances really only want to insure you for short-term travel. So up to like three or maybe six months of travel. And we also found that they were really, really expensive if you tried to put in six months of travel with them and because you wanted to go to so many different countries. Safety Wing actually cover you in every single country except for the US and it's just $42 USD per person per month. So we found it to be the most affordable option with the best coverage. We do have an affiliate link which will pop in the description below. If you are looking for some good travel insurance, well then we recommend checking out Safety Wing. If you use our link, you don't pay any extra money, but we do earn a small commission, so we appreciate it. Sign up for an American Express Platinum card as well as an American Express Explorer card. Now, the Explorer, which is 395, has a $400 credit, so it's a no-brainer. The other reason that you would want to get the Explorer card is when you sign up, you get a huge sign-up bonus, which you can use on hotels or flights. Once it gets into the second year of that card, 
I don't know that the benefits of the Explorer card are worth it because you're paying $400, you're only getting $400 travel credit. The other benefits aren't that great. Yeah, and the second credit card, the Platinum, is a huge advantage. The, the huge amount of access that we get in airports when it comes to lounges. We obviously travel a lot, so we spend a lot of time in airports. And sometimes we have to wait a long time in between flights. So we have access to a lot of lounges, have a lot of food, have a place to shower. That makes a whole difference when it comes to traveling. So the Platinum card, even though it is a huge expense upfront, $1,450 is a lot. You do get the $450 travel credit. So if you are traveling a lot, getting that access to Priority Pass lounges and Pass Premium lounges actually saves you a lot of money in airports. The other thing that we found has saved us a ton of money is that if you rent a car, if you book your car rental using American Excess Platinum Card, it actually covers the insurance for that card. You don't have to pay all the extra insurance fees either, which is gonna save you a ton of money. Plus, when you sign up for the first time, you get 150,000 bonus points if you use the link down in our description, which is a huge amount of points that you can then transfer to airlines or hotels to save money. You also get one free night every single year in a core, is it a core? Yeah. in a core hotels so a core hotels are generally like 200 plus per night so even though the sign up sounds like such a big fee when you actually break down all the savings that you get it's gonna save you at least the amount of money that you pay if not more plus give you a lot more comfort in a lot of situations so we 100% think it's worth it if you do use our affiliate link below, you'll get 150,000 sign up bonus points if you're in Australia, and we will get an extra 40,000 bonus points. So we would really appreciate it if you use it. It costs you nothing else, but it gives us something. Yeah. So in 12 months of travel, we actually only spent $202 on visas, which is really low. That really surprised me that we didn't spend much money on that. Um, obviously, that's going to be a different expense for everyone depending on where you come from because different countries have different agreements and sometimes you have to buy visas, sometimes you don't. So that's all we spent. We were really lucky with that. Uh, but we did have to spend $336 on bribes, fun fines, visas. <laughs> fines um, because we accidentally overstayed one of our visas. If we give four, we can go. Yeah, and okay. you okay? That was a big mistake on our part. It cost us $336. We never received a receipt for that one. That's why we call it a fine. You can put that into whatever category you think. <laughs> now we do have a need to be connected because of what we do online. So we spent $517 for the both of us for a full year. Um, we in Europe had a SIM card everywhere we went. In Asia, wherever we landed, we obviously sometimes double check before getting to a country because in the airport sometimes it is more expensive but sometimes it's exactly the same. So at least you land in the airport, you sort it if you do get that SIM card. Even if it is a little bit more expensive, I would say that it's worth it because once you land and you're trying to figure out how to get from the airport to the hotel, it is so nice just to have internet right away. And then on that point, you could even look into eSIMs. We actually have used Air Allo quite a number of times and we've found it to be a really great eSIM. Basically, you just download the eSIM and then you set it up before you arrive in the country. Once you arrive in the country, you turn on your phone and it's automatically gonna to connect to that network. So you can call an Uber or figure out how to catch the buses. Really easy without having to worry about having Wi-Fi or purchasing a local SIM if you just don't wanna deal with that make sure your phone is compatible because mine is not unfortunately. That's Just true. Yeah. Make sure your phone is compatible. For Southeast Asia, we started documenting our expenses super accurately using the Travel Spend app. We actually love this app. Um, this is not an affiliate link or anything. We actually just love this app and think it's really great. If you're going to start traveling, then definitely download that app so that you can start tracking your expenses. And uh, because we started using this app at the beginning of the year when we got to Southeast Asia, I've actually been able to break down our very accurate costs of each country throughout Southeast Asia. So if you want that guide to know exactly what you'll be spending in each country, then just click the link in the description below and sign up for that guide. But on that note, in terms of the app, it's just such a good way for you to know exactly where your money goes, how much less you can spend or how much more in which category that you prefer you can spend more on. So it's something that we highly recommend you to start from as soon as you want or as soon as you can. 
um, because that will really help you in your overall enjoyment of your travel. I think that's everything. Yeah, we, for those of you that made it that far, thank you very much. <laughs> so this video is actually part of a three video kind of series that we're producing because we do get a lot of questions around money and packing and travel and YouTube and we wanted to answer all those questions but doing it in one video would obviously be way too long so we've broken it down into three different videos. This is plus obviously the budget video. If you're interested in learning more about our full-time travel, you can go and watch our packing video, everything that we pack for full-time travel, or you can watch our video all about YouTube. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Bye.